Welcome to Bible Believers Fellowship and the ministry of BBFOhio.com as we conclude our study of Psalms of Thanksgiving. This is part two of two. I can breathe air. Yes. Yeah, you don't know how many people, how many of the fishies died because they got lungs but didn't have enough sense to get out of the water before they breathed. It's one of the mysteries of evolution. It only takes one. <laughs> that's what. That's right. It was just at some point one of them succeeded. Granted, he had no one to mate with. That's. Yeah. I mean, we could. We could. You start pointing out the absurdities of all that. But that's what. That's what we. It, they, we just made ourselves. We praise man. Human potential. Self-esteem, praise man. That's no. If if you got any sense, you'll be one of his people and the sheep of his pasture. Amen. Amen. And it says, uh, where was that? It ends with, "For the Lord is good." How dare you? No, you got the wrong idea about God. God is good, and He will Amen. He will not reject anybody who will come to Him. Problem with that queer, if it's who he is, Steve Fry. The problem is, is he's too stiff-necked, hard-headed, and self-centered and self-loving to repent and turn to God. And he thinks God's accountable to Stephen Fry. Yes, he's got it That's backwards. Yes, he is. God is not accountable to man's opinion Amen. of what has happened through history. Amen. Well, we got time for one more at least. One o seven, Psalm one o seven. Beginning in verse 17, we'll read 17 to 22. Read that with me. Fools, because of their transgression and because of their iniquities, are afflicted. Their soul abhorreth all manner of meat, and they draw near unto the gates of death. Then they cry unto the Lord in their trouble, and He saveth them out of their distresses. He sent His word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. Oh, that man would praise the Lord for His goodness and for His wonderful works to the children of men, and let them sacrifice the sacrifices of thanksgiving and declare His works with rejoicing. Now, I love it. It, started, it says, Fools, because of their transgression and because of their iniquities, are afflicted. Amen. Amen. And and in this, I I I, I got to tell you, you're getting a, you're getting a real nice little uh, study tonight. I'm being real nice. I'm not being. I'm not. You know. I'm not. You know. You know. I get. But boy, I did some of this earlier today. I made a little video, and what I was dealing with are these these guys who are out there preaching a gospel without repentance, without telling fools to repent of their transgression, to repent of their iniquities. And what they are creating are Christians, professing Christians, who are filling churches, remaining committed to their sin. Yeah. And if you want to know why so many local churches are going into the pit, it's because of the message that they believed in the first place. They have never repented of their sin. They simply have believed, well, yeah, I believe you know, Jesus died for my sins. Yeah, I believe He was crucified. He, he was buried and He rose again. Yeah, I believe that. Well, then you're saved. Oh, really? Great. Hey, let me bring my boyfriend with me to church. <laughs> yeah, that's what they do. And they continue living in sin without any conviction because conviction comes from the Holy Spirit. And if they haven't been saved, they don't have the Holy Spirit in them to be convicted with. So they continue coming to church. They continue to be welcomed among what true saints are there. But eventually, they become the majority. And when the preacher who's possibly truly saved, he dies off, then the majority of unrepentant, unregenerate church members vote on the next pastor, and when he gets up here, he accommodates the unbelief. That's what's going on in America. They're fools, fools, as it says here, because of their transgression and because of their iniquities are afflicted. And churches today 
Too many Christians today are fools. Well, with Billy Graham, there's no discipleship. They just got him saved and sent him off wherever they went. And uh, the message many times didn't involve uh, repentance it's, it, from the very beginning. They were never offended with their sin. Yeah. They never had a holy and righteous God. And then they, when they did make a profession, of, we've got a one-hour documentary on this documenting the fact that he sent them to liberal apostate churches and to Catholic, the Roman Catholic churches. Yep, yep. He even sent some Jews who came forward back to the synagogues. <laughs> He's, he, that's his admission. Yeah. Yep. Uh, their soul abhor, abhorreth all manner of meat, and they draw near unto the gates of death. I have to just say that this is one of my favorite verses in the Bible. Um, you know, because today you got all these people who are telling you it's a sin to eat meat. You got these Christians who are trying to put people back as vegans, or put, put, put you on the Daniel diet where you only eat pulse. You ever seen those? Daniel diets and all these things. And they, th that is all, I mean, you, you can laugh till you're blue in the face, you ain't going to offend me, but that's a part of the apostasy. Do you know that the doctrines of devils that are listed by Paul include forbidding to eat meats? Yep. Amen. 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 Yeah, that's right. Listen, as a Gentile, the meat that I eat has nothing to do with anything. When it comes to salvation, when it comes to my walk with the Lord, you say, well, eating bacon every day isn't good for you. I'll grant you that. But it has nothing to do with my relationship with the Lord or being saved. Yes. A bad diet, maybe I should be, you know, and, and, and there's nothing wrong with saying, suggesting to somebody, if you found out I was eating bacon every day, you say, Greg, you might want to lay off a little bit on the bacon. It's better for you if you eat it in moderation. Well, that's biblical. Let your moderation be known unto all men. Amen? Amen. But to, to, to tell people that they cannot eat meats, do you, I, I want you to keep an eye on that. The more you see Christians going away from the biblical gospel, the more you see these pagan ideas creep in, including veganism, which is pagan. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now, don't get me wrong. If you are a vegan because of a health issue and you really need to eat like that, no problem. It's when you make it a matter of religious conviction. When you try to teach that the Bible teaches that, it's even worse. Right. But that is part and parcel. We're seeing it today. And Christians are getting caught up with a lot of New Age stuff. Because they're, they're buying into this false doctrine of meats and veggies, which then usually is related to the whole New Age holistic movement. And there are some things, um, not every, it's always like that. There are some things that those people teach and do that aren't necessarily evil. But the overriding idea is to get you, pull you in, and then just take you away from the Christian message, away from the Word of God. And how many of you know people like that? I do. I know a lot of people like that. They've totally quit serving the Lord. They're all about, they're health freaks to an extreme. And they forbid people to eat meat. And says, and they draw near unto the gates of death. And it, it becomes this thing where death itself becomes perverted in their, the way they look at it. And they, they say, you know, death is just a normal part of life. No, it's not. God never intended for any of us to die. Did you know that? Amen, brother. So when someone dies and you weep, there's nothing wrong with that. Jesus wept when Lazarus died, even right before he was getting to raise him. Why? Because death is not God's will. It's not God's perfect plan. It was brought on because of the sin of man. Because of sin, death passed upon all men. But that wasn't the way God planned it originally. But these people who get away from the Word and get into all this New Age stuff and start trying to tell everybody you know, not to eat meat and all this weird stuff, you'll see them also have a weird view of death. A very strange thing happens. And uh, it says in verse 19, Then they cry unto the Lord in their trouble. And this is wonderful. And He saveth them out of their distresses. Thank you, God. <laughs> Folks, when I got saved, I had been living as an utter, absolute fool for five solid years of my life before that. Mm -hmm. 
Before that, it's just a kid and just, you know, la, 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 just, you know, kind of going through life. But about the age of 14, I got serious about sin. I got serious about living for Greg. I got serious about being self-centered. I got serious about everything serving me. And for five solid years, you'd seen me, you'd seen a fool. But you know what? One day, I became convicted. I believed the gospel. I was, I, I was sure of a few things. I was sure that I was a sinner. I was sure that I had committed sins that were an offense to God. I was sure that what I believed was wrong. I didn't carry any of that with me. I left it and turned around empty-handed to God and said, Save me. Amen. And He saved this fool. Amen. You see, if you won't own up to being a fool, if you won't own up to the fact that you're lost, that you are guilty before God, you have a sin nature and you've committed transgressions against Him, and that what you believe is wrong, mm -hmm. it's, 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 it goes like, Egh! to the pride. And if you won't own up to that and turn to Him empty-handed, trusting with faith toward the Lord Jesus Christ, trusting what He has done for you, He shed His blood and paid for all your sins. They laid His lifeless body in a tomb, and three days later, He raised His own body from the grave demonstrating His power over sin, death, hell, and the grave. Amen. And you've turned to Him with nothing and trusted fully and completely in the power of His blood to cover and wash your sins and the power of His resurrection guaranteeing that He will raise you from the dead. Amen. I'm convinced that somebody who really has a grasp on that and are, is truly saved shouldn't have to be lectured to be thankful <laughs> shouldn't have to be prodded to give thanksgiving. Amen. And I'll leave you with that tonight as your question of the night. Because, you know, we only see you, I only see you on Sunday and Wednesday. And you can, you can put on an act for a couple hours. Anybody can. You can come in here and say, Oh, I'm so happy. And I'm so thankful. Isn't it wonderful to be saved? And then you walk out in Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday... You're not thankful. You're not living like you've really been saved. You're not living with a real, full sense of what God has done for you. What do you do? Change your attitude. How do you do that? You repent. Read the Word. Repentance isn't just something you do when you get saved. Repentance is something you do every day of your life as yeah. you look at something. And yes, read the Word because that's where... See, that's the problem. And I'm not judging anybody in this room. But I'm just here to tell you that too many people aren't in the Word. Amen. And it's through the Word and the washing and watering of the Word that you will be brought to repentance in your life. Amen. And you'll see there's something wrong there. What do you do? God, change it. There you go. I surrender. I'm wrong. This is wrong. I want to change it. God, change me. And I'm convinced there just aren't very many Christians asking God to change them. They're just happy where they are in their misery. You ever heard of the, the people who, you know, the preacher supposedly one time introduced his wife, and he says, yes, my wife of 65 years, she has enjoyed 65 years of bad health. <laughs> and there's people like that. They just get into the situation, they get themselves in an attitude where they just enjoy being miserable. And I'm convinced there's a lot of Christians like that. And if you will just look at the Word and allow it to be a mirror that shows you things you need to change and you will repent and turn to God if we confess our sins. He is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us of all unrighteousness. If you don't confess your sins, then that means that you're just stained. And it'll stain your attitude. It'll stain your Christian walk. It'll stain your profession. It'll stain your witness. And I'm urging you, out of thanksgiving, out of a heart of thanksgiving for what Jesus has done for you, let it motivate and propel you to repent and confess to the Lord 
your sins. Hey, I'm preaching to Greg Miller as much as anybody right now. Amen. I'm just here to tell you, we're all human, and so we're all foolish. And so we all need to be reminded of the necessity of a thankful heart and to let the Word of God speak to me and be brought to repentance and to confess it. The Lord already knows. You, can't, you think you're hiding it from Him? Talk about foolish. He knows. Yes. So what do you do? Just, Lord, I'm guilty. I'm wrong. I'm, it's sinful. Ask for His forgiveness. He's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Ain't God good? Yeah. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank You for this time and these psalms of thanksgiving. Do pray that this is as much as encouragement to believers here as it has been to me. And Lord, that as it goes out to others who hear by other means on the internet or wherever they hear it and see it, Lord, we want to be an encouragement to other believers because we're all in this together. None of us are deserving. All of us, if we got what we deserve, would be in hell right now. Amen, Jesus, in spite of us, has saved us. Thank you, God. And we're so thankful, Lord. And as we go into this holiday that's been set aside for Thanksgiving, and so many around the world don't even thank you on that day. They're thankful to each other and thankful to their welfare state or whatever it is they're thankful for. Lord, may your people be reminded that we should be thankful to you and show thanksgiving to you, but also speak of our thanksgiving in front of others and to others and always give testimony of how thankful we are for our wonderful God and in all that, Lord, we just pray that Jesus and His name would be glorified in spite of us. We all fail and fail and fail, and you, just like the Bible says, you turn around and forgive and forgive and forgive. Help us to be thankful. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 All right. Do we want to do we want to sing one more before we go out? We're not going to see each other until December. You put all the books away? Let's sing Amazing Grace. You all know that. Stand up. Okay. Start us off at the right core key there. Amazing Grace, how sweet. Sing, God.
God. Thank 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 God. All God's people say thank God. Amen. Amen. <laughs>
solid King James Bible preaching and teaching, along with the encouragement of the psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, tune in to our internet radio station available every day, 24 hours a day, at bbfohioradio.com. Join listeners from over 150 nations, all 50 U.S. states, and other U.S. territories who are tuning in and receiving free Bible teaching at bbfohioradio.com.